So after Tuesday's video about desert, I had so many people telling me I should make a video about dessert, and I'm sure a lot of them were joking around. No one actually wants to watch a video about desserts, right? Well. Here it is. I had some pretty interesting ideas for videos to do this week, but for some stupid reason I decided to do this silly video instead. You are more than welcome. And besides, there is always another time for those other videos. Like the desert video, I intended on looking at a wide variety of desserts in this video, but I remembered one dessert with a rather odd name, and when I began looking into it, it turns out to be one of the most hotly contested names I've ever come across. It's even sparked town rivalries over the claiming of this confection. I'm of course talking about the ice cream sundae. Like I said, the name is hotly contested. It's fairly often when making these videos I come across different stories as to how things got their names, but this one really takes the cake takes the sundae I ought to say. His name is so closely tied to its creation that we need to ask more who invented the sundae as opposed to just how it got its name. Obviously the reason this name sounds so odd is because it shares its name with a day of the week. They are pronounced identically, with just a slight spelling variation. How did this name and this concoction even come about? Well it seems to be genuinely believed to come from the US but after that we have some contention. There are many places that seem to claim to be the home of the sundae, from New Orleans to New York City, but there's two small towns in the states that seem to to be the most adamant that they created it. The earliest claim goes to the town of Two Rivers, Wisconsin in 1881. It was here that a man walked into a soda shop and asked the owner for something unheard of. He didn't just want ice cream or ice cream with soda, but asked for ice cream served with chocolate sauce on top. This confused the owner, Edward Burner, but nevertheless he did just that. Burner thought that the mixture would taste awful but luckily it caught on, which led to Burner selling the concoction for a nickel, but only on Sundays. Thankfully however this ice cream dessert began being sold on every day of the week. But the name Sunday stuck around. But why did the name change to end with an E instead of a Y? Well the story goes that Bernard started selling the Sunday in canoe shaped dishes. It was when filling an order for these dishes he called them Sunday dishes instead of Sunday dishes. Now this is all well and good, a fun little story about how the ice cream Sunday got its name. However this fun little story has sparked controversy in the ice cream creation world, specifically with the town of Ithaca, New York. It was here in 1892, 11 years after the Two Rivers claim, that we meet Reverend John M. Scott, who on a Sunday after his services at the church visited Platt and Colt Pharmacy. The Platt of Platt and Colt was Chester C. Platt, who was also the treasurer of the church. It was here Reverend Scott and Platt would discuss church matters, and wanting refreshments, Platt served up two bowls of ice cream, but instead of plain vanilla, he mixed things up and added cherry sauce with a candied cherry on top. Both men agreed that this new way of consuming ice cream was delicious and knew it needed a name. Eventually, they landed on the name Sunday in honor of the day it was created. In this story, we also have a more logical reason as to why the Y was changed to an E. This was to not upset the church as Sunday is the holy day, and naming ice cream after the holy day may have caused offence. So these are our two simple stories, both claiming the creation and naming of the ice cream Sunday. Well, who's correct? Well the obvious answer is of course the Two River story, I mean their story came first after all. Except we have a slight issue with this, that being there is no hard evidence for this story. And trust me, the town of Ithaca haven't let that go under the radar. In retaliation to Two Rivers claim, Ithaca has dug out a selection of evidence to the Sunday being created in their town, from adverts to ledger books to letters from patent attorneys. The earliest written evidence of an ice cream Sunday comes from the Ithaca Daily Journal, dated April 5th, 1892, advertising the Cherry Sunday. Of course, Two Rivers didn't take this claim lying down, and so began a rivalry between the two towns over the naming rights of the ice cream Sunday. We've definitely covered some controversial subjects on the channel, but this is number one. I'm nervous the comment section is going to be a battlefield of Two Rivers and Ithaca residents raging written war over Sunday supremacy. Despite the evidence, Two Rivers sticks to their guns and insist the Sunday was invented in their town. One resident said that it's why we're all so fat here, and despite the lack of evidence, the story is believed to be true. Both towns' official websites even claim to be the home of the Sunday and throw shade at the other town in doing so. Two Rivers have retaliated many times to Ithaca's claims, from cease and desist to Ithaca in regards to their claim, hundreds of postcards sent to the mayor of Ithaca telling them to stop claiming to be the home of the Sunday, and even a DVD was was sent to Ithaca in 2006 of the citizens singing a Sunday fight song. Finally, this song made Ithaca retaliate with a song of their own in 2007 called Two Rivers Police, set to the tune of Moon River. This song goes, and to save your ears I won't sing it, Two Rivers, Why Live in Denial, The Story You Compile Won't Play. Your sign maker, a true faker, without Sunday proof your claims melting away. 
Ed Burners of the Fool the World, there's such a lot of fools you see. Though sometimes the truth may offend, still you can pretend, my sweet Wisconsin friend, Two Rivers, please. So, who really does own the title of naming the ice cream sundae? Well, it all seems to point to Ithaca as they have the evidence, and personally, a lot of Two Rivers retaliation seem to be very over the top, the kind of action the town would take who don't want to be exposed. But then again, Two Rivers is in Wisconsin, the dairy state. If there's anyone you don't want to argue about ice cream over, it's probably the state whose nickname revolves around their dairy products. So maybe we have just got to believe them. Either way, what started as a silly tongue-in-cheek video about desserts due to making a video about desserts revealed just how crazy the world of names can get, even bringing to light a few between two American towns all about bowls of ice cream. Anyway, normal programming will resume again shortly. Name explained depends on awesome people like yourself donating small amounts on a monthly basis, especially with silly videos like this that will get no views. A huge thank you to everyone who does support Name Explained on Patreon. Your funding helps make Name Explained possible in a way it wouldn't be able to without each and every one of you. Just $2 a month can help out in a huge way, as well as get your name here with all these awesome people. Thank you. Two rivers why live in denial? The story you compile won't play.